recording in progress. So I'm going to start. You can hear me okay and see me okay and everything. Absolutely perfect. Yeah, perfect. absolutely. All right, perfect. then. Okay, we're off. Now, good afternoon, everybody, and thanks very much for joining us. Um, we're joined again by the legendary Ronan O'Sullivan, <laughs> uh, a Kerry man living in Cork, married to a Dublin woman, as he likes to say himself, and uh, an, an expert and an exponent of all things DIY and handy. And uh, thanks very much for joining us this afternoon, Ronan. We really appreciate your time. How are you doing, Frank? Are you good? Good now. Hope you're all well. All well, all's keeping well. The sheds were unfortunately we're still close to outside activity, but we are uh, we're we're trying men are making the most of it up and down the country, getting outside as much as possible, and one or two are getting into the workshops. Exactly. And uh, and getting stuff done. Because that's kind of what it's all about, isn't it? Being able to use your time wisely and be productive. That's it. That's it, Michelle. Um so you're gonna to talk to us today about tools. I am. I'm gonna. I'm gonna get now again. When I was kind of getting this ready, I actually never realised how many tools I had until I kind of got this organised. I seem to have a lot of everything. But when I was kind of breaking it up, I, I it kind of simply falls into a couple of simple brackets of what different tools do, how to use them. But what I was thinking I might go over today is literally break it into its simple areas and kind of give you your options within each area. You know what I mean? As, as basically, de depending on what you want to do to whatever material you're working on. So, okay. So first and foremost, I kind of I think the 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 statement or the, the question that you kind of want to answer, or I'd like to answer, or try to answer is what goes into a good toolbox? What goes into a, a good tool kit that you can carry around with you? General DIY day to day thing. And I came up with the answer. I actually think a good toolbox is an empty toolbox, is it, or a tool bag. And that's because I realized that's what I actually do because I have the luxury of having a shed and store everything. And my actual tool bag is pretty much empty. And in my tool bag, to be honest with you, I've not much more than a couple of bits, goggles, pencils, and that's it. It's, it's kind of empty. And as I, as I go to go do a job, whether it be plumbing or electric or whatever, I grab the tools that I want from it, chuck it into the toolbox and our tool bag and off I go. So that's kind of generally how I work. And because I do have the luxury, as hopefully a lot of you do as well, of actually having a shed so that you can get yourself organized and be a bit clean and tidy up all of it. So I suppose the way that I am talking about now today is how I actually organize my storage more than how I organize my toolbox and the, the different areas that are in there. So I suppose starting off number one is not trying to be a square or footy duddy as you have to be safe. Okay, end the story. And that very simple means if you're working in teams, you have earmuffs, you have gloves, and if you're getting gloves, I'll be honest, I go a little for a lot of stuff, but I wouldn't go a little for their gloves. Okay, the only ones you can get is the maxi packs, right? They're so comfy, they breathe, they don't get sweaty, they don't get loose, they do the job well. Um, if you're going sanding and stuff, you obviously have to have some form of mask to stop inhaling all the back. And most importantly of all is angle grinder. You gotta, I know they're awkward to a certain extent, but if you go at an angle grinder without covering your eyes, you kind of deserve to get hurt. You should. Um, so that I suppose is number one. You always have to think, you want to get to the end of the job without hurting yourself. And, you know, those things and a bit of patience will go an awful long way to making sure that happens. So then I suppose when it comes to tools, I suppose the initial place to start off with is measuring. Um, because again, it depends on what you want to do. But if you want it to be accurate, you have to measure it. Now for measuring, we all know the simplest thing in the world. And again, I'll fly through these. Measuring tape, we've all seen them. Just in case you don't know, the bit at the top wiggles for a reason, okay? Because when you push into something, it is pushed back along the measuring tape. Therefore, the palm of my hand is now zero. But when you hook onto something, it wiggles out. So now the outside surface of my finger is zero. So it kind of, that's why the top of it wiggles, just in case you think you've got a broken measuring tape. It's kind of supposed to do that. Yeah. Then I suppose for woodworking, you have, I only have a 500 mil, but this thing here, it's not a ruler. This is called a rule. And a rule is specific kind of for, for engineering and tech and work and stuff, because the, the thing about what a rule does is, the end of it is zero. If you think of a ruler, there's a line marking and depicting where zero is. 
Rule doesn't have that. The measurements go right up to the end. Zero is at the end. There you go. That's so when you put it against something, you can get a, an accurate measurement. Fine accuracy, then, I use this quite a lot, is a vernier calipers. Handy enough thing, it's all in millimeters. You can very accurately measure the width of something and you can very much and accurately measure the, the, the separation of something. Handy little tool, I use that quite a lot. So that that's kind of, actually, I found out a very interesting fact the last day. Can I run it by you? Yeah, go right. ahead. Do you realize a meter is actually inaccurate, right? So for every, they, they've done this, when they defined what a meter was, right, way back in the French Revolution, they made a meter a specific length and they made that rod out of, I think, pewter or plutonium or something started with a P. But that actually, they've done the math since and they've realized that that def definition of what a meter is, is actually one fifth of a millimeter inaccurate. Oh. So they're like, it's a huge long story, really interesting, but the meter that we all use is wrong. It's, oh. it's coming for, for what it was supposed to be. Yeah. <clears throat> So I suppose then the next part of measuring is measuring kind of angles and things like that. And this is, this is of all things, this is what the cornerstone of, of anything, building anything, it's, it's to do with 90 degrees. Perpendicular platforms, parallel surfaces, perpendicular um, surfaces, really important. And we all kind of know that that's what we do for that. It's a general tri-square. It has one job if you use it properly. There's a million ways to use it wrong and one way to use it right. And that is the blocking bit at the end has to be in pushed against the surface. And once it's pushed against the surface, the angle that it leaves is 90 degrees. One way to use it right. Now that comes, and I have a, quite a lot of it. Again, I didn't realize how many of these I had until I'm going to show you for entertainment purposes. So to show you how important the 90 degree angle is, we have your bog standard tri-square. We have your upgrade of a tri-square. Then we have a metallic metal square. Then we have an adjustable one that you can change the measurements and all the rest of it. Okay. And we got the big plastic fella. He's very handy for using power tools. And all that stuff. And we got the bigger Good fella Lord. again that helps you with getting the nice and all the rest of it. And then, like that wasn't enough, I also have to fill like that. So, kind of shows you. A 90 degree angle. If you look around, sorry, if you look around you and see everything around you and think how many rectangles can you see? How many flat surfaces between your TV screen and everything? It's critical. The cornerstone of everything is making something 90 degree. And that's what all that's done. But as I said, with all these things have one thing in common. There's one way to use them right and a million ways to use them wrong. The big bit has to be firmly pressed up against the surface. It creates a 90 degree angle. That's that's it. That's it. A flat surface. Flat surface, 90 degrees, that's all you want. Now, in, in your woodwork, for any of you that might have done woodwork and all the rest of it, you probably came across something like this, which is the sliding bevel. If your angle isn't 90 degrees, you can change it to 45 or whatever. And the advantage with that is you can lock it into whatever angle you want. But again, there's one way to use it right. Put it against the surface, and there's your angle. Okay, so sliding bevel. I'm sure you're, for anyone who did woodwork, you probably remember them in your toolbox. Yeah. Okay, so that's kind of measurements. Um, there really isn't much more to it. I suppose then I was thinking about how you actually work with the wood and, or with the materials or whatever you're cutting and what your options are with that. So I suppose the first area that we'd all immediately think of is cutting material. Okay, and I'm going to break this kind of into two very simple areas of your options with hand tools and your options with power tools. So I'm gonna do the hand tools first. Okay, again, we all know what it is. Okay, it's a, a hand saw. Again, it, it's simply lots of teeth, the same way as a steak knife works, this works, same, same principle. Um, the one thing that I will say to you when it comes to using a saw, if you hold a saw like that, you're making your life an awful lot more difficult. Okay, I will say it a thousand times when I'm teaching first years wood. I go, you hold it like a gun. So your fingers has to be pointed like that. So when you're holding it, it just, it makes it twice as easy to work with because you're controlling the wobble, controlling any kind of distortion. Your finger does that for you. That's a kind of a rip saw, something we'd use for cutting big pieces of wood. For smaller pieces of wood, if you're doing any indoor joinery, things like that. You have 
something like that, uh, just a normal tenon saw. Again, we probably all remember them from school with the wooden handles and the brass strip. Yeah. Um, basically, a simple little tool to use. And again, remember your index finger sticking out. And if you want any help at all with actually making an accurate cut, think of a pool player. Think of a player playing pool. They'll always use their spare hand that has to go and hold the tip of the pool. That's how you get started with a cut. Don't kind of just, uh, you've got to, like a pool player. Um, and a very, very handy thing you can get that really opens up doors for you is a called little mitre box. Really, really, really handy. Because that will cut a 45 degree angle for you. It will cut a plumb line. It will cut everything. And it does it by having these little slots. Ah, so, um, very good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's all, they're so handy. Uh, for, and you can bring them anywhere. You can clamp them onto a surface. I, I love working with molds. You know, trimming things off, and all you need for that is 40 degree angles. That's all you need. But yeah. this, you can screw that onto your kitchen table and you work away at it, and then you're finished. <laughs> you'll be fine. You'll be grand. You might need permission. Oh, uh, yeah. But basically, <laughs> and, and it comes with a little thing. Ah, sorry for the noise. All and right. You should be able to just slot back in there as well. Oh, sorry for the noise. Oh, that's very clever. That wall. And it just really handy um a mitre know, box is that what you're calling it? it's called a mitre box mitre box mitre box six seven quid in any hardware yeah um very cheap yeah now if any of you are then so we're going to talk about that's the saws we all kind of remember but let's let's look at problems that you could potentially have like say you want to put in a, a, a socket into into plasterboard how do you do that what do you need you need this guy you need a compass saw it is called and this is simply the same as a really short, really strong builder's bread knife. You know, it's that's all it is. It's really thick, big serrated teeth. The beauty of it is, is you can poke a hole into your plasterboard and literally cut it like you were cutting a loaf of bread. And that's all it is, is teeth going forwards and backwards. Now, an actual funny thing too, that you might not consider, like if, if you think, if you try to cut a piece of wood with a steak knife, you're only going to get so far down and then the blade is going to start getting stuck. That's why the teeth and saws kind of stick out a tiny little bit. So as you're cutting a channel, the channel is slightly wider than the actual blade. So that's, so that's why saws are like that. It, it creates the gap, yeah. Wider. So then that would be for cutting something like plasterboard, compass, compass saw. Yeah. And then if you want to do, actually I should have done this last time. If you're doing really fine little stuff like little curves, you can use this fella. It's called a cup. So a coping saw, tiny little blade, tiny little teeth, and you can really do intricate work. Being honest, I don't wouldn't use any huge amount. If you're cutting metal, you can have a little junior hacksaw. Again, same sort of thing as a coping saw, little bendy blade, tiny little teeth, and that's for cutting metal. Okay, so that's kind of your saws there and th there. I think that's pretty much it with saws. A quick question just in regards to saws and, and sawing, uh, yeah. should I say. It, I, I've seen sometimes when you're sawing a very hard piece of wood, a, a bit of three-in-one oil on the blade makes it move a little easier. Is, are you in danger of damaging the wood? Is olive oil uh, better? Uh, I'll be honest with you. I would, I would never voluntarily put oil on wood. But I've realised I'm just about to kind of contradict myself, right? I, I would put candle wax. Oh, right. And and the same with, with drawers. You, you you I wouldn't put oil into wood because again, depending on how porous the wood is and all that, you, you could do make it look ugly, it could stain, it could seep over a long time, it's got weird viscosity in the wood. Candle wax is brilliant. Yeah. Get an old tea light, rub it off a sticky drawer, or or if you want if you are working wood and it's getting stuck, then put a candle wax. Very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could see yeah, that. Too. Not, it's wax as well. So, yeah. So, yeah, I, I, no, I wouldn't put it I personally, no, I may as well say here, okay, big massive disclaimer. I seem to know what I'm talking about an awful lot of the time, okay? I do get things wrong, and I get them wrong dramatically sometimes, okay? So I'm on a good streak, but if I get it wrong, let Frank know, and he, he won't bother telling me, right? So, anyway. I suppose then moving on to then after cutting and you get your wood to whatever size you want to get it to, I suppose then your next title I would give it is almost shaving wood. 
how to actually how you can get control the depth of wood and things like that. And that to me then, bear with me, is all to do with blades and sharp blades. So starting off, in a good toolbox, what I would have, we all have your box cutter, okay? And most, you have to. You have to have that in a toolbox. I always like to have a long blade, okay? Because this again, just gives me so many options. You have a nice, long, strong blade like that. It can really help when you're trying to be accurate, whatever. It's I, it's something I would always have to them each other. Um, okay, good scissors. I would, again, always think this is such a handy tool. I've never realized how handy it was until I got it. But basically, it's just a really, it's almost like a garden shears. Yeah. Man, that'll go through metal, it goes through everything, really, and it's lovely size. Yeah. Very, very strong little fella. Um, just, again, just a pair of workshop shears. Um, one of the handiest little tools I have is, and I use them all the time, is a metal scribe, okay? Oh, yes, yeah. You see these in a metal workshop. Um, when they're now, I don't know much about metal work. I'm, I, I was never good at it, and I didn't like my hands getting all greasy, and I didn't like the smell of it. That's why I like woodwork. In a metal workshop, this is used for marking and scoring metal. And so, like, it's indestructibly strong steel, and it has a really gorgeous, hung, strong point on one end and on the other. So, yeah. man, you're I'm always using this thing. So, a little scribe, really, really handy. And obviously then the good scissors and all that, your options for cutting. Now, when it comes to shaving wood, we always know we have chisels, and then we move on to kind of planes. So I'll quickly talk about chisels to you for a minute. You have two main types. Now again, there's a variety of different types. There's two main types. You have a chisel that you would use in a violent way. Okay, so something you want to hit with a mallet, and you want to be able to wrench wood out of the way, whether you're taking out a mortise or a hole out of a piece of wood or something. So what you want a violent chisel, something that you've no problem giving a few slaps to, you use him. Okay, he's a good, and if you look at the cross section of it, it's actually a rectangle. Okay, so there's a good big chunk of metal. Yeah. So he's the fellow you can be violent with. A mortise chisel. But if you want to be delicate with it and you want to be slicing wood off, then you use a thing called a firmer chisel. A firmer chisel, the angles, it's much, much, there's way less metal and it's much more comfortable for you to actually work with. Okay, so he'd be like a builder's chisel, he'd be a carpenter's chisel. Gotcha. So yeah. for shaving and shaving. So violent, non violent. What I did stumble upon a few years back, and again, I'm, I love buying tools, as you can probably tell. <laughs> no way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A collection of, of tri squares. Um, I always look for something, and I, again, I, sometimes you stumble upon gold. And one of the ones I stumbled upon that was gold was this fellow. He's a Stanley chisel, and he has two blades. So he has a blade at the top, yeah. and he has a blade down here as well. There's a chamfer there you can see. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then this, there's a serrated part here with the, that is also sharp. So that means you can hit it this way, or you can hit it that way. So you can actually use it like an axe, like a hatchet almost. Very good. And I, uh, very handy to do a lot of things very quickly with them. Again, I suppose then on the same shaving theme, then you're looking at again from our old toolbox, you have a plane. Okay, jack plane, snow plane, whatever. All this is is basically the same way as you shave your face. Is a flat surface with a little blade sticking out a tiny bit, and as it rubs over that flat surface, the blade takes off any high parts. That's how a plane. Now, a lovely, interesting kind of thing about a plane and why they don't get blocked is the plane bed goes down like that and there's a little cap iron over the top of it that has a bump on it. That bump has a critically important job that as you're planing the wood, it curls it back over itself. Otherwise, the plane will continually get blocked. Yes. So that's why when you see planing and you see beautiful planing going on, it's all little pebbles of wood and it's, you know, it's one of those nice things about woodwork and that's all because of one big bump. I suppose then for finer woodwork, you have then your little block plane, uh, just handheld, same principle, flat surface, tiny blade, very nice for just kind of fine finishing stuff. If you're doing curves of any kind, you have these fellas, they're called spoke shaves, and they're held like so, again, same principle, flat surface, blade sticking out, you can ah, yes. around objects, and you have two different types. You have one with a flat surface that will do a con 
vex curve, which is an outside curve. And then you have another fella that has a scooped bottom. So he'll do the inside of a curve. Ah, very good, yes. So one, will, one will do the outside and one will do the inside. Yes. Is, so two different spoke shapes. Lovely to use. I, I like in these. They're actually an enjoyable to use. Right. On the same vein then, and these, I swear to God, are worth their weight in gold. Cheap as chips. They're called rasps or surforms. There's two names kind of given to them. I have three different types of them. All they are is basically a tiny little cheese grater with a handle. Yeah. And try, oh, these do magic. I swear, they do an absolute mountain of work. You can get a tiny little fella, and as you can see, he's curved. So yeah. he can really, really work into things. And as I said, all of this is a, is a cheese grater. Yeah, yeah. Just from taking out wood. Then you have a little handheld fella here. Very, very easy. Sh like the shape of that is exactly the same as a plane, and that's all it is. But instead of one blade, it's a hundred little blades. And then you have a big fella that you can work with your two hands at the same time. They're absolutely priceless. I wouldn't be me without these. They're, I'm using them all the time. And then, and that's that's finally, that's evening off a rough piece of wood is it is it you just well, yeah absolutely sure i i to be honest with you this entire workshop is built out of rough on rough sun lumber every bit of it and i did i didn't put anything thickness or nor planer nor nothing i just basically built what i built i rubbed over every edge of it with that right and you get you get as decent a surface like it's not going to go into a show route this is you know what i mean it's a workshop yeah I use it all the time yeah yeah um and then it has a metal file version of well as well, which is basically just a really, really rough surface and great for just, you know, like I, I wouldn't consider myself a, a fine carpenter. I consider myself a builder carpenter. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah, is yeah. the important thing, you know, and make it, make it strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I suppose then when it comes to that, that's the kind of slicing section of a kind of cover. And again, all I'm trying to do is run through the options that you could have. I suppose then the next area that you could kind of look at is when it comes to gripping things, how you can grip things, uh, whether it be nuts or bolts or wood on a surface or whatever. I can tell you, you helped me to tidy up my workshop. Organized. <laughs> Unintended consequences. That's great. As I said, I never realized how many I had. So, okay, again, different tools, different jobs. Like they, so gripping. We obviously, number one, you would think of your standard pliers, and you do for a reason, is because it's a brilliant tool. Just grip something really, really hard. Same thing then is your snips, where instead of gripping, it will slice and cut. If you're going at electrics or anything like that, you need one of these. Then various forms then of another snips would be your oh, yeah. Okay, snips, they're great for taking out nails, stuff like that, where you have to well, well, that's, yeah. Um, then you're talking a needle nose. Now, I don't, I actually, again, we all think of the tools we know. We all know the needle nose pliers is the long thing, okay? And it's fairly obvious what it does. It rips some things far away in an awkward place. I got this guy years ago, and he's actually a very, very clever kid. So when he grips something, depending on the size of it, when you pull him tight, the, the jaws will naturally square up. So right. the problem with a needle nose is, is you can grip two tiny corners and as you're trying to poke it, it's always not because it doesn't have good purchase. Yeah. Whereas this guy, I'll try and get him. When, I, when you grip him, jaws of him will naturally form parallel lines. So he flip and grip ah, everything. Yes, yes, yes. Again, Stanley, I like Stanley stuff. Yeah. Uh, then you have your adjustable. Uh, I, I, a small one of these I actually find very handy. Um, again, yeah. And you have your normal, well, big, small, banner, yeah. You know, just will, does the job. Um, so that really is, I suppose, for gripping kind of small metal awkward things. But then I suppose you're also talking about how to grip wood and how to work on the surface with it. Now, the thing here is I actually don't have. I realised I actually don't have a vice in this workshop. And I, again, it kind of came to me yesterday as I was coming around here. So here I am coming on saying, have an empty toolbox from a man who doesn't have a voice. Yeah. I don't have a voice. What I have is I have a variety of different ways of holding stuff in place. So I quickly... 
Right. Clamp. I have a few of these. Okay, lovely for reaching over something and pinching something closed, and they lock in place. Okay. Yeah. Your again, your standard clamp, the big fist and all the rest of it. Lovely. I have two of these big, big strong fellas. They're very, very strong. They you get a really good squeeze on these. But I have this as well because I can put him here and I can spread things apart. So that's why I have him. He's the only fellow I have. I have a lot of these cheap and by God, they're handy. Same principle as a glue gun thing. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Really nice shape. Can you see it clearly there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really Absolutely. Really nice shape. Yeah. Lovely deep throw, flat surfaces. And they have, you know, a small one and a big one. Yeah. And little, you buy four of them for seven quid. Buy two packets of them, and that's like an army of hands. Yeah, yeah. Then again, little. Now this is a, uh, what they call an F clamp. You can. There's no no release buttons or nothing. It's it's a very simple thing. That basically you're you're getting that piece of metal to lock in place by going off centered. So an F clamp, put it between your thing, push it, twist, and it'll naturally lock. And as you can see, you get a very very long wide neck on those. And you can go big. I've sash clamps as well. Yeah, yeah. I'd always have a rake of these little fellas. In any workshop for a variety of reasons even things like imagine you're putting up a, a bit of a screen or something whatever just clip 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 yeah with the elastic fellas i have or there's a big massive spring in there yeah. i've got three dozen of them and I'm, again they're always being used for little things little fingers holding things in place yeah just holding and up they, tarps or whatever sorry you can hold up a tarp or whatever if Absolutely. you're and they're they're so strong and i'd always have about 20 or 30 and then the final fella the final clan is this fella now? I remember talking before in that first time that I met you, yeah. and that first webcast we did when the audio and the video was a bit dodgy. Um, but these are the clamps that I use with him on the table. I remember yeah. I was talking about the thing called the pulp bench. Yeah, the pulp bench is basically it's it's a box about six inches deep. That's what I've been putting all these tools out of here. Like I'm I'm under the top surface, but I'm above the bottom surface, and yeah. I have all the tools just. And here for myself but you can use the pulp bench with these fellas and this is a clamp that i got two of them off amazon i think 20 quid where there's an l bar here yeah. and you can see here that i can now put that into my pulp bench and now i can grip whatever material i want wherever i want very good yeah so this is my voice yes think about it, i can hold anything in any way here without having and in all fairness, again, remember back in school how many times you bumped off that lovely big brown piece of metal sticking out the middle of the box. Yeah. <laughs> the big metal thing sticking out at crotch height. Yeah. <laughs> Never good. Never yeah. good. And if I do need to do that, I have this fella. And again, Lidl's best, man. Where I can now get parallel vice to hold what if I'm planing or whatever like that and literally clamp him onto my table. Of course, yeah. But yeah, there's yeah. my old-fashioned voice. Yeah, 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 yeah. He hangs off my pole bench off the side of it. So the concept coming here was just to keep things as simple as you can. Brilliant. Um, and I suppose then the last kind of area, then the last area of tools would be impact, where you're actually hitting something. So again, we'd be talking simple phase. We've all had the Stanley hammer. Okay. Yeah. Everybody knows them. We've all used them. Now, if you're looking for an idea to get yourself a Christmas present or a summer present, or whatever, I also have, because as you can tell, I like my tools. And I have this one, okay? So this is for a big weld at Stanley. And look at how thin, right? So you have wow. the thinnest little blade in the world. Yeah. And it's all MIG welds. So it, this isn't a cast piece. This is made up out of three pieces. And it's a 16 ounce head, lovely ergonomic handle. And this is this is my best friend. I, yeah. I, that's a very hard thing to hit a nail very hard with because it's a tiny little head. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, this fella does severe damage. But um, those lovely thin ones, they're they're absolutely gorgeous to use. There's all the weight is up at the top. Yeah. And that's what you want it. And the so when you're yeah. baiting it, um, you're giving you're getting purchased, you're getting the most amount of purchase. If you are hitting something and you don't want to break it or crack it, you use a rubber mallet. If you are hitting something and you do want to break it and crack it, you use a lump hammer. Yeah, lump. Yeah. So again, be careful with these goggles. 
for the love of God, God will have them off these guys because they could do serious damage very quickly. Um, so if you don't want to break it, if you do want to break it. Yeah. Um, and I'd always have as well, I think no self-respecting house shouldn't have a bar and a big and a small. Okay, so that's just a little flat bar, lovely little thing to use. And again, pry bar. Yeah. Okay. So I think that is your kind of hand tools, your basic choice of hand tools kind of covered and what you're sort of able to do with them. So you okay with that? Any questions? Or Absolutely no. And I'm just going to encourage the men out there to please do pipe in with the questions. I, I can't turn on the audio because there's so many of you, but if you can just pop a question into the question and answer section and um, down on the bottom dashboard, you'll see a Q and A, please feel free to answer any questions and anything that can't be answered today uh, Roman will has generously offered a, to come back I'll on anything. I'll take a good stab at doing I'll, I'll take a good stab at, at trying to answer it and probably be wrong. Very good very okay. good Right I suppose then your next kind of area and your next thing to look at then would be power tools and power tools God bless them fantastic they do so much work so quickly um there's quite a few of the tools that I've shown you this morning that I wouldn't use all that much anymore, simply because I can plug something in and get it done in uh, a time. So again, I suppose you're looking at your options of what am I actually doing to what I'm working on? Am I cutting it? Am I smoothing it? Am I what? So I suppose, start off, you have your circular saw. They all kind of do the same thing, table saw, circular saw, it's just a spinning blade. Lots of teeth, teeth take away small material each time, okay? So a uh, little circular saw, they're lovely, they're great, they're dangerous. Again, ear protection, eye, eye protection, you be a fool not to. Um, so that's your circular saw. Again, we assume we all know they have the retractable blade, exposes the teeth, and that doesn't come back until you're actually cutting the material. There isn't a huge amount of tips with that, just be careful. Make sure your two hands are holding onto it strong. Don't ever do it single-handed. I really wouldn't advise that. Again, on the vein of cutting material, you have a jigsaw, okay? Again, you pull the trigger here, it's the blade is vibrating up and down. This, you can cut curves, you can cut metal, you can cut plastic, you can cut all stuff like that. Very, very handy. Um, again, only advice I'd give you when you're using a jigsaw is you wrap your spare hand around the front of it and do not do it one handed. Your, your hands have two different jobs here. You're, okay, so as a right-handed person, yeah. I'm like that. My left hand's job is to hold it down. My right hand's job is to steer it. So that's it. They both have a job. You don't jigsaw like that. Right? Because if something gets caught, this will be snapping around the place. And that's how you break blades. Right, another little thing I picked up uh, is the multi-tool. And a multi-tool, by God, they, they're, they're a fairly reasoned enough thing. Yeah. Basically, the principle with these is, and they're really good, man, for doing small things like skirting boards, working around, ah, oh, they're unreal. Basically, it's a metal blade with teeth at the top of it, and this thing just vibrates like crazy. So as those teeth are vibrating, they're cutting away material the whole time, and they, you can cut tile, you can cut stone, you can cut metal, Wood, anything absolutely brilliant. Yeah, um, really like a workhorse of the thing. And I suppose what I'd say you now as well is an awful lot of the stuff I'm showing you here, whether it be a battery operated or not, if you are buying a tool, you can the, the way people are doing it nowadays, and I'm I'm kind of deciding which platform I want to go on. But if you say if you buy this, you the same battery will do your drill, the same battery will do your jigsaw, the same battery will do everything. Because batteries are getting so much more powerful now, like all these tools behind me would be redundant in five years' time because they all have cables. Because the, the 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 power and the strength of the hand tools you can get now that are battery operated is incredible. They're so good. Yeah. Um, so anyway, this is Little's best, you know. I wow. just wanted to try a uh, try a crappy one before I bought a good one. Yeah. Um so multi-tool, you can put all the different teeth on it, really, really, really handy. Hey, okay. handy grinder. Okay, a very dangerous tool used for cutting stone, used for cutting metal, used for cutting whatever. Now, I found out actually a very interesting trip, trick about angle grinders a while back, but hopefully some of you might not actually know. Right, and I'm sure this has happened to people. But 
problem with angle grinders, like an awful lot of some of tools, is depending on the brand, they'll all have different things to do the same thing. So we'll say a DeWalt will have a key, a Makita would have a key, a Biddle's brand would have a key, and they make them different sizes on purpose, just to be awkward. Just to be awkward, yeah. But it doesn't matter. You can open any angle grinder wheel with any key. Ah. Because you only put one peg in and you use the other peg to rest off the wheel. Or the, you know, that, that metal disc. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it actually doesn't matter which one you have. One peg is all you need. Ah, right. Yes. So try that. Seriously, yeah, yeah. If anybody here has an angle grinder at home, right? Yeah. Put one peg. Okay, I'll do it here for you. There, locked in. Now that is, that's unfortunately the right thing. Right. And you feel it well, this is just Murphy's Law. Okay, you don't fit. So I'm putting one on the outside of the wheel and it's open. Excellent. Yeah. Simple physics. Um, now, the other thing that I would actually say about an angle grinder is this guy will do damage very quickly. Oh, you know, like have a cup of tea before you use this guy because, in fairness, if you're going to get hurt quickly, it'll be this tool that will do it. Yeah. If you, there's a real difference, an awful lot of metal cutting discs now. Again, I would imagine we all remember those discs that had the, that mesh in the middle of it to keep everything together, okay? Big stone disc. Yeah. We all remember the big metal disc. They were lethal. So nowadays, the blades are paper thin. Like you can barely see there. Yes. They're absolutely paper thin. And in the same as the old days, you used to get a cutting disc and a grinding disc. You do not grind with these discs because they, they will shatter. You, will, you don't want to be putting them off, off center. Um, so if you're grinding, put a grinding wheel on. If you're cutting straight across something, make sure there's a cutting wheel on. Yeah. All right. Quick, quick question in from uh, Ricky Richard. Uh, has a circular saw and it gets stuck halfway, even with a new blade when he's using it. It should not be. Um, what's he cutting? I would. I okay. That the to me no. If you have a new blade on it, right? In fairness, the teeth are not the problem. The sharpness of the teeth is not the problem. I think where the problem could be there is is your wood sagging when you're halfway through cutting it. Are you are you propping your wood properly in order to do that cut? You really if, like if you imagine imagine I have a, a large piece of wood here, and if I'm cutting that lengthwise. I have to, as much as possible, try to keep sure these two pieces are staying level until the very end and finish my cut. And not falling in. Because yeah. if you have one of them and it's hanging down like that, chances are it's going to be, it just, it's playing with the blade. Yeah. Now, that would be that situation, but you could also be cutting wood. And if you were cutting natural wood and you're coming across a real dirty knot underneath or a place where the tree is splitting in all sorts of ways, that could happen. But if it's a new blade, prop your wood. Make sure it's not sagging. I think. Yeah. Now, will you get him get back to me there and, and tell me what he's actually cutting there? Yeah, yeah. No, I'll say that. And um, thanks, Ricky, for the question. Um, I suppose then as well, angle grinders, they can grind metal and clean metal. Really, really if you're restoring meat, piece of metal, or whatever, put a blade like that or a, a wheel like that into it. That's just a wire brush on steroids, and that'll grind off paint or whatever you want. And then you can also buy stone discs. For cutting stone actually when i put my lip on the my two inch lip in the shed here i use this guy just to cut that little line to split it because then he couldn't it wasn't deep you know you could really control it as everything yeah 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 so i suppose that's cutting metal then we're on to again shaving and planing wood and planing wood then your only boy is that's a hand planer again Lethally dangerous. You really have to be careful with them. But you imagine there is a, a just a long, sharp, hard blade there spinning around incredibly violently, incredibly fast. And all it's doing is taking off little shavings all the time. Um, I actually use him quite a lot. He's again very handy. He'll play in the surface completely smoothly in, in jig deary time and without breaking a sweat. Okay. Pad sander, okay, as simple as we know how they work. I'll be honest, I'd rather do it by hand. I don't use them a huge amount. 
Um, it, it's just a surface, flat surface, it's vibrating. I find there are differences for market. So you yeah. get all these little scratches over it. I, I, to be honest with you, I'd sooner do it by hand by now. However, I don't think that's going to be the case when I do decide to buy whatever platform we're going on, because you can get these really lovely little pad sanders now. Um, and they're, they're, they, they, they don't go in circles. They vibrate violently. Oh, they're, yes. They, they're so good. They're almost they mouse-like. Yeah. yeah. Oh, they're so good, but I haven't spun for one yet. Yeah. Okay. Probably the most dangerous tool of all, besides the angle grinder, is the rotor. Um, rotors are really, again, they just do, they do a huge amount of work for their size. But basically, it's like a drill, but you hold it with two hands on each side. So this part in here in the middle spins around insanely quick. And it's, again, the same as a planer. It's just taking off tiny little pieces of wood. This is how you would decorate the edges of pieces of wood, whether you're rounding them or putting a detail or an envelope curve. Or if you look at your kitchen cabinet, there'll probably be some detail around the doors. Yeah. That's put on with this type of machine. Ah, right, yes. Um, and insanely dangerous, like really careful. Take a, take a finger like that. Yeah. Um, you really have to be careful. Um, and the, how they follow a profile is, is if you can imagine there's a blade with a little wheel on the top, the wheel is rubbing off the surface while the blade is cutting the edge. So again, lovely handy tool. So then we're, we're finishing up now, talking about how to fasten things together and how to get things, you know, joined together in a permanent way. So I love this guy, little nail gun, my God, you'd use them all over the place. Brilliant, you're doing stick and ply with or something, whatever, you don't mind a few little nail holes, bang, 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 brilliant. Yeah. Um, you have the option so with an air compressor as well. You might see him again coming up in little Aldi, things like that, where you can buy a compressor, you can buy the holes, you can buy the gun and all the rest of it. You can buy all these other tools that will work with them. Um, I haven't gone that way. I think having a tank and all that is, I'd rather battery, Operated to be honest with you. Yeah. Um. Again, I have plenty of work for him. He's a he's an old one now. Like God, he's a big massive heavy thing, but they're very very handy. Okay. I've, I've seen them with staples where you can yeah. put a a knife if you're if you're trying to tidy up a cable even along yeah. the top of a skirt. Yeah. And I assume you're just you're just changing the the setting and changing the what you're what you're shooting. But that's all you're doing. I know this as well. I actually the one I have, which I don't have here for some reason. Um, there, there's a little dip that comes out in it, so when it shoots in the stable, it won't. It won't yes, pinch the cable. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. Again, the, the tools they're making nowadays are light years ahead of where they were even 20 years ago. Yeah, like really, and they're the the, the quality and in the fairness, they're very affordable. Well, you know, it suits someone like me that has a. I obviously would think about two. And I suppose then it's funny when we, when we talk about, like, I, I remember I was, I started doing woodwork and I didn't, I hadn't seen a Phillips head school by the time I started learning woodwork in first year. Like, if you think of it that way. Yeah. A Phillips head screw. I, the first one I saw was when I was in secondary school. You know, it was flathead screws and how many times did you have the flathead screw, big cabinet screwdriver and break a knuckle. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I suppose that brings us onto fastenings. Again, how we used to have learned it would be a nail. If you really want to make it tight, you put in two nails and put them at different angles. But no, screws have taken over completely because think about the advantages you have. You have a huge grip because of the surface area and you can take them out. Yeah. It, you know, the boy would why, why use a nail. It, nails and tacks, things like that, small, that's different. But like, you know, but, but however, nails have their place. Like if you think about it, they make grooves using nails and not screws for a reason. And that's because the screws are brittle and, and nails are not. Yeah. So a nail will allow the roof to breathe. Whereas a screw, they'll ch -ch -ch just break every time they're stressed. So that's why nails are used in roofs still. Um, but screws are great. And you have obviously your drill, then you have two different types of drill. And again, I'm only going to say this, I, again, I hope a lot of you would know this, but there's two types of cordless drill. One we would all imagine that we know, which is your standard drill, okay? It rotates something around, a drill bit, uh, screwing in a screw, you're drilling a hole, whatever. 
then you also have these guys, which are called impact bits. And I remember it was only a couple of years ago I actually used one for the first time. I, I built our house out of this or with this. And I remember going up a ladder with a fella boned me his, and I was going up the ladder and I was going, sure, well, a drill is a drill is a drill is a drill, for God's sake, pull the button, it'll go around. And I used it about three seconds and I said, I'm getting one. There, it makes everything easier because it uses basically violence to get the job done that you don't have to do. With these, you're only turning. With this guy, it's like a hammer action. It's, it's just it's kicking it in the whole time. So, my God, they're so, so handy. And they also have the advantage then. That when you are, they don't have a, a, a rotating head on them, like this guy where you have to open it and close it. Your standard bit, clip in, and if you want to change from a Phillips head oh, to, yes. a, yeah, yeah. to a whatever, they clip, clip, clip. Yeah. By drill bits that would fit into them where they're just clip, 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 instead of tightening, twisting every time. So, but it's also important to have both. You, there's an awful lot of things that he can't do that only he can do. Yeah. So if, if you're drilling holes, he's your only man. But if you want to get something done quickly, he's the fellow you use. Almost like a, it's a decking, or if you have to screw in a lot of decking or something Absolutely. like that. Yeah. And one question that I remember a buddy of mine asked me before, and he kind of hit his head. It was He's asked me something about screwing when a screw is, is stripped. We've all had this problem. We do actually have a really handy little tip that screws tipped. Are stripped. Yeah. So a screw is stripped when you don't have a good grip when you're turning the trigger and blah 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 blah. blah. It makes a comb. Get an elastic band. You put the elastic band over the head of your bit, put it into the screw, and stop. Wow. Works every time. Every Just time, I guarantee it. Common gardener elastic band. Elastic band because it basically grips what's there. Whereas you're you're trying to get metal to hit off metal, yeah. an elastic band just fills that void. So if you have a stripped screw that's been bugging you for the last eighteen years, go get yourself an elastic band and a screwdriver, and uh, and that will kind of get that done. Christ, that's a good one. That's a great one. Yeah, I have a lot of silly little t tips and tricks like that. But come here, I think that kind of for me kind of covers tools. That's fantastic, yeah there's, yeah. there's a million other ways of doing it, but basically everything is based off of a couple of very, very simple principles. You cut it in a straight line, you cut it in a curve, you shape it, smooth it. That's kind of woodwork 101. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it sounds that easy, doesn't it? <laughs> kind of is. Yeah. It's simple principles. Yeah. Yeah. If you keep a clear head. So well, as I said, if, if you ever have any ideas of anything that you want me to do, if any of you lads out there have a question for me or whatever, I want to, I don't care. Like again, I'm game on for it. Oh. You want me to make a woodwork joint in front of you, I'll do that. If you want me to, I don't know, shave my dog, I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> I know, actually, funny, I've been doing that for the last week. He's he's a wolf on mix and his hair is coming off. Like he always oh, locks, if you imagine. He doesn't molt, he locks. Right. So Twice a year, you have to start picking out his old hair. I've been doing that for the last week. It's a joy. Um, yeah, absolutely. Enjoy it. Like I said, seriously, I'm, I'm here to answer questions. If any of you have any, I'm absolutely more than happy to answer. Ronan, thank you so much. That was a comprehensive guide. I, I clearly delivered as only an expert can because it takes an awful lot of knowledge to make something seem simple. I, I, and we all appreciate that. And uh, we, 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 of course, we'll be back to you if you're willing to, and we're going to come back with a few challenges and a few more topics. And, Absolutely. Um, and I'd love you to lead this, and I really mean that. Like, it's it's one thing for me to sit here talking about painting or talking about hand tools and whatever like that, but that's kind of me calling the shots. And to be honest with you, I would rather it if you call the shots. Yeah, no, the feedback is always so strong. Seamus Gillespie has just said thank you very much. And, and, and that's he's speaking for a lot of men. And as I say, we will put this out on video and, and share it amongst everyone and, and share the request for any topics because um, we really appreciate it, Ronan. We really do. And, no and thank you. Thank you so no much. Um, absolute pleasure. And I look forward to talking. Enjoy the rest of your summer. And, uh, you I'm going to go. Take care. Thank you so oh, much. It's long before, lads. That's long. Oh.